A wood chip boiler can be an excellent source of renewable energy for larger buildings like the shooting lodge at Alvey. I went to visit Jamie and Catherine to ask how it works for them. Well, we're here today just for you to take us round and hopefully show us your wood chip boiler in the processes. Right. That'd be fantastic. Okay, well, what I suggest we do is we start uh, showing you the production of the chips Great. and then we'll move on to the boiler. So we'll go from production to consumption. So the timber you're taking us up to, is that timber that's been in for, I mean, is it it's natural felling time, is it? Uh... We're really the, what I'd call the scavengers of the forestry world. Uh -huh. What we're doing is we're taking thinnings, first and second thinnings. Yep. Uh, we're taking wood which has been left out of specification. So what we've got here, as I say, is about 2,000 cubic metres fell last summer. We're buying in uh, at the moment also a certain amount mm -hmm. and we'll try to keep a stock so that we've always got something like 2,000 cubic metres drying either here from our own woods or from what's been bought in. And when these were felled, moisture content is somewhere around 55 to 60 percent. Uh, if we can leave it for 18 months uh, it drops down in the summer to it's probably between 20 and 25 percent moisture content. We will then uh, chip it when it's below 30 percent. Okay. Uh, and store it in a shed where it won't reabsorb the, hopefully, any moisture. Yeah, we'll go down and have a look at the shed. Great. This shed was actually only completed in February and then Andy's just started Jeez. chipping this week. So he does approximately 10 cubic metres an hour in chipping. What we've got behind us is a delivery trailer. Okay. And though we've got an underground hopper at Alvey House, a lot of the people we're delivering to have overground hoppers. Right. So that can uh, be filled up, reverse up, go up three metres, okay. and then tip. So how does that compare then with pellets? Chips have the advantage that it's got the least energy input to produce your fuel um, and therefore it should be a slightly cheaper price per kilowatt hour of heat. Mm -hmm. It has the disadvantage that if you're transporting it a long distance, it's bulky and therefore you need a larger volume uh, per kilowatt hour of heat. So chips are ideal for delivery locally. From our point of view, it's great because we're taking the wood within 10, 15 miles away. All our customers are within 10 or 15 miles away, and it needs the least energy. And we're now diversifying. We're now supplying a local primary school, secondary school in Canusi, an old folks' home. We're supplying offices in Aviemore, already Holiday Park. I hope to be the wood chip baron of Aidenach, but that's in the future. <laughs> we started. The whole estate could be self-sufficient both in biomass, we're looking at putting in a hydro scheme, we're looking at wind turbines, we hope within three to four years that we'll be a net exporter of energy. This house, which is a family home, but it's slightly bigger than the average family home, it's 44 beds, 18 bathrooms, mm -hmm. uh, listed buildings, so there's uh, no double glazing. Uh, we were going through 58,000 litres of oil a year, which in about 2,000 cost me about 4,500 pounds. Mm -hmm. Uh, if I'd continued on last year, it would have cost me over £33,000 to heat the place. I mean, most people will have a fancy hopper with hydraulic uh, roof. This is actually just rollers and a winch that we winch stags up in the larder. There's three paddles that go round and they're geared to the auger. You can see the auger going through there. And when there's demand um, and it needs a bit more heat, the paddles will move round and push the chips onto the auger. How often do you have to fill the hopper? During the summer time, we're probably putting a tractor trailer load, which is 13 cubic metres, uh, in about once a week. And during the winter, we're probably filling it twice a week. Yeah, so when I mean, we're talking about 13 cubic metres, what is the cost of that then if you were selling that as chips on the open market just now? At the moment, it's coming in at about £16 a cubic metre and we're doing 13 cubic metres at a time. So our costs last year could have been 10, 12,000 pounds 
uh, for heating the house. Yeah, I mean, one of the things we've been talking to Jamie quite a lot today, Catherine, but you are sort of probably the financial side of the house when it comes to running the house. Yes. Uh, that seems like a big saving when Jamie's talking about comparing what you have now to what you had in the past. Oh, it, it, this system has really saved a lot of money and it's also much more efficient. Um, the house is warmer for longer, whereas the oil boiler would go off at 10 o'clock. There seems to be so much excess hot water in the system. In fact, there are some times I keep saying, you sure there's something wrong because the radiators are still hot and it's 3 <laughs> o'clock in the morning. And, and, yeah. and there is, you know, it produces a huge amount of hot water. I couldn't believe that it was going to work. I had this idea originally of a wood chip boiler, you know, some man feeding it, yeah, you know, yeah, and it was yeah, going yeah. to be so labour intensive yeah. and... Um, and I just imagined this huge thing. And I can't believe that when, when you look at the boiler later on and you'll see this little glow, I can't believe that it's actually producing that amount of hot water and heating because I imagine sort of big flames and uh -huh. big lots of wood going in. But it's it's quite a simple system. Yep. I mean, what we've been hearing a lot today is a lot of positives. Uh, has there been anything that you would say there's would put you off? I suppose the only disadvantage, I, I go down there and it looks like something out of Star Trek yes. and you know whereas yes. before I had an on off timed <laughs> <laughs> so and I keep so you must teach you know but uh, there's enough people here know how to work the system but it's um I don't need to. <laughs> oh, I'm going to see my boy. This is exciting technically. Uh, this is what I'd call the sort of modest minor of the um, wood chip boilers. Uh -huh. What happens here is the uh, chips come up an auger, uh -huh. which is in we saw rotating, in rotating the... there, mm -hmm. and they come up here, they drop down through what they call a drop cell feeder, which is, it just means that air can't go back. What they're worried about is it burning all the way back and into, your into the hopper and starting burning the chips in the okay. hopper. Yep. So it's an airtight seal there. Yep. Uh, if the thing does burn back for whatever reason, very simple, all we've done is we've just connected our water supply onto a pipe down here, and that's a thermostatic thing. It, uh, so, the so if the temperature gets too high, it just it. puts water into it. Okay. This is a boiler, and at the moment it's on idle. Um, what I'll do in a minute is rev it up. And when there's demand, more chips come in, air blows in, and within a few minutes, the thing goes from there to quite a hot temperature. Putting a few chips in. suddenly gone to 100 percent and within a minute or two that will be uh, uh, going to full capacity. Is this the ash? <laughs> yeah, I, like this. I empty that about every two weeks. During the winter, or if it's not running quite efficiently, I might be emptying it up to once a day. It's 0.02 percent it's supposed to be of the volume that goes in. It's fairly small. The boiler itself, the me mechanism, was about £17,000, but by the time we'd changed all the plumbing around and built the hoppers, the total cost was in the region of £80,000, of which we got a 50% grant. This is the size of the baths. So, and, you know, when we do weddings and things like that, we use an awful lot of hot water for washing up, so... Yeah, I can imagine. Um, and if it does tend to get a bit cold because, say, we're washing up at lunchtime and it's been on idle, I'll just say to Jamie, oh, we need a bit more hot water, and he'll just go and yeah. press the switch and we get hot water. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's, good. it's yeah. good. It just feels so much warmer. There is so much excess hot mm. water that it's running around all the pipes mm. and just is keeping it warm. If you feel that there now, yeah. that isn't... A heating system that's the, the hot water just running through the mm -hmm. house. Insulation is that something that you've had to upgrade when you because we spoke earlier on about being an old house listed building, windows haven't got double glazing. Did, was, was there anything that you did when you were specking up the house with the new system? Or? No, nothing at all. With it being a listed building, you can't put double glazing in. Mm -hmm. The only thing I have done is when I've renewed the library curtains, mm -hmm. they've got sort of wool lining so they're very big heavy curtains. So all in over what we're seeing today is that you are very happy with your wood chip system. Yes, yes absolutely it's been um, tremendous saving. 
There's a case study which shows payback times for Jamie's system on the Use Green Heat website listed on this page. It also shows the effect of the renewable heat incentive the government aims to introduce in April 2011.